It's Paul Joseph Watson with Infowars.com and this is the truth about Russia's anti-gay law. Now, have you actually read the English translation of the so-called Russian anti-gay law or have you formed your opinion on it based on what the mainstream media told you? Would you be surprised to learn that the Western political class and the media has completely lied to you about the true nature of this issue as part of a monumental public relations scam. I'm not approaching this from the free speech angle. A good argument could be made that homosexuals do have the right to propagandize, even to minors, to promote their lifestyle. Where that might run into problems, of course, is the fact that LGBT groups who preach tolerance are often intolerant of those who use their free speech to criticize homosexuality. However, the media's portrayal of this issue, this Russian anti-gay law, has not rested on arguments related to free speech. It's rested on the completely fraudulent foundation that the Russian anti-gay law actually criminalizes homosexuality. The truth, as we will see, is vastly different. Now, the source of this, which is a white paper that you can read in the description box below, was emailed to me today by an author, a journalist by the name of Brian M. Heiss, himself a gay man and someone who has devoted his life to defending the LGBT community against discrimination. You know, this white paper that I'm talking about today is not written by some right-wing crank. It's not published by the Family Research Council. It was written by someone who's worked with some of the world's biggest CEOs on diversity management for corporations and many other influential organizations. It's not written by a fundamentalist Christian. So any charges of homophobia go out the window straight off the bat. So let's get into it. Heiss started out before he wrote this paper by actually trying to disprove claims made by two of his colleagues who are also pro-LGBT broadcasters that the truth behind the so-called Russian anti-gay law was in fact completely different to what we've been told by the media. So he went into it with an attitude of that it was exactly as it had been portrayed by the mainstream media. During the course of his research, he found out that the truth uh, was far different. So this whole controversy can be traced back to a New York Times editorial, July 1st, op-ed, that erroneously claimed tourists visiting the Sochi Winter Olympics who are pro-gay or merely suspected of being gay, could be arrested. It was written by Harvey Feierstein and claimed, quote, Mr. Putin signed a law allowing police officers to arrest tourists and foreign nationals they suspect of being homosexual, lesbian or pro-gay and detain them for up to 14 days. Contrary to what the International Olympic Committee says, the law could mean that any Olympic athlete, trainer, reporter, family member or fan who is gay or suspected of being gay or just accused of being gay can go to jail. Now, that was the New York Times editorial, uh, July 21st, 2013. It went viral. It became the foundation of the entire story and of a million alarmist proclamations that homosexuality was being effectively banned in Russia. The truth is quite different. Because Heiss, who wrote this white paper, which you can read in full below, actually bothered to obtain the English translation of the Russian law, something which no mainstream media outlet bothered to do before giving you its take, its narrative, its opinion. And this is what the Russian anti-gay law actually states, and you can read it in the PDF below. Two key points. First one, media coverage has almost completely ignored the fact that the Russian law applies to sexual propaganda aimed at minors and has nothing whatsoever to do with the sexual orientation or sexual behavior of adults. Nowhere in contradiction to this New York Times editorial, does it state that gay people or people accused of being gay can be arrested in Russia? Makes no reference to such language anywhere in the actual law. Two, the word gay, 
homosexual, sexual orientation, same sex or LGBT identifier appears zero times in the legislation. Zero times. And why do they call this the anti-gay law when the word gay or homosexual does not appear in the law whatsoever? So as Heiss documents in his white paper, the so-called federal anti-gay law, this is actually a vast improvement on the previously instituted regional Russian laws on the promotion of homosexuality, which actually do mention words such as sodomy and lesbianism. And even those more draconian regional laws have resulted in very few actual convictions. So this is actually an improvement on the situation for gay rights in Russia. This federal law is an improvement on the more draconian regional laws that have been in place prior to this one being introduced last year. So the hysterical claims that we've heard that this law makes it illegal to be gay in Russia, as the New York Times told us, or that this somehow marks the beginning of a Nazi-style purge of homosexuals in Russia... Those claims are a complete myth if you actually read the law, which the mainstream media and the political class and all the activists out there have completely failed to do. So, let's get into it further. In the seven months that this federal law has been in place in Russia, has it been used to target homosexuals or criminalise homosexuality, as the New York Times claimed would happen? As Heist documents, there have been just three convictions and all were as a result of activists staging impromptu public protests to symbolically challenge the law. In virtually every case, police were reluctant to even arrest these activists. And that can hardly be described as a purge against homosexuals, which some quarters of the media have hysterically insinuated. The truth is, Russia is actually expanding protections for members of the LGBT community. In September 2013, Russia agreed at the UN Human Rights Council to implement, quote, protection of citizens against violence and discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation. Again, Rush gays in Russia are actually seeing an improvement in their situation. Now, compare Russia to America in the context of gay rights. In 1993, Russia completely decriminalized Sodomy, whereas sodomy is still illegal in 12 U.S. states. In Russia, it is illegal to fire somebody based on their sexual orientation. In the United States, quote, There is no federal law that consistently protects LGBT individuals from employment discrimination, according to the Human Rights Campaign. Russia allowed openly gay people to serve in the military a full eight years before gay people were allowed to serve in the US military. And there are many more examples in this white paper proving that gays living in America have less rights and are more likely to be discriminated against than gays living in Russia. The number of anti-gay hate crimes committed in Russia is far lower than the number of gay hate crimes committed in the United States. You might say, well, that's because they're not accurately reported or recorded in Russia, because there's no mechanism for it. Well, actually, as high as documents, there is. It's the Sova Center. This is a well-respected human rights group. This is not a police organization collecting statistics. This is actually a pro-LGBT human rights group that's collected these statistics and found that hate crime, gay hate crime in Russia, is far lower than in America. So, we ask the question, why is the US media obsessing about anti-gay sentiment in Russia when the problem is far greater in their own backyard? Fact, the US is closely allied with at least 10 countries where being homosexual is illegal, and in some cases punishable by death. While condemning Russia, neither President Barack Obama or the mainstream media has offered any criticism of these countries. Quote, clearly the US-led anti-Russian propaganda effort 
is not motivated by a policy of protecting LGBT rights everywhere, writes Heiss. So why is the US establishment mischaracterizing the so-called Russian anti-gay law? What's the motive? Well, the fines for propagandizing to minors are heavily skewed not against individuals in this law, but against corporations, particularly foreign corporations. The Russian law is not aimed at homosexuals. It primarily aimed at foreign media corporations. This is the truth behind the actual implementation and purpose of the law. Because it could potentially devastate US multinational conglomerations in the entertainment industry, primarily Hollywood, and open them up to massive financial penalties. This is why there's a huge coordinated PR campaign against this law. It has nothing to do with protecting gay rights and everything to do with targeting Russia and protecting Hollywood and the entertainment industry from potentially massive fines. So Heist gives the example of Viacom in the white paper and you can go and read that. Then he asks the key question, would the US government and news media, all owned by multinational conglomerates, implement an enormous propaganda campaign demanding the repeal of the Russian Federation law because of the potential revenue loss a company in violation would incur with a 90-day suspension. He basically makes the point that Viacom couldn't show any of its productions in Russia for 90 days, which would cause tumultuous financial penalties and missed revenue. And as highest documents, yes, they would create a promotional PR campaign against this law simply to rescue Hollywood and the entertainment industry. And he goes through all the figures which prove that. So one motive is financial. Another is geopolitical. The American establishment and the mainstream media's response to this law, characterized by its wildly inaccurate reporting, strongly suggests that the motive was not to advance LGBT rights, but to create the narrative that Russia is becoming an increasingly intolerant society when in fact the opposite is true. As we've seen, gay rights in Russia are better in terms of protections for gays living there compared to America. So the opposite is true. And while the abuse of women and homosexuals in countries like Saudi Arabia, with whom the US, of course, is allied, are ignored, they are often heavily emphasised in places like Afghanistan and Iran, in order to grease the skids for so-called humanitarian intervention and war. So is this part of a broader agenda to isolate Russia geopolitically? While we can't know that for sure, we can confidently assert through the fantastic work of Brian Heiss, which you can read in this white paper, that the truth about the so-called Russian anti-gay law has been hidden from the American people and the world. It's not about protecting homosexuals. It's not about criminalizing homosexuality. Nothing in the law states that. It doesn't even mention it. It's primarily aimed and targeted at US media corporations who could see their profits absolutely devastated and, in fact, could see their productions banned in Russia because of this law. That's why... Whether you agree with that or not from a free speech perspective, that's why there's this huge public relations campaign against it. It has nothing to do with protecting homosexuals who are actually worse off in America. Barack Obama's got nothing to say about that. Worse off in Saudi Arabia, worse off in 10 different countries, some of which put gays to death. America's got nothing to say about it because they're allied with them. This is about protecting... US conglomerates, Hollywood, the entertainment industry, and it's also about further isolating Russia geopolitically, uh, with NATO concurrently encircling them as a future path potentially to war, but in the short term certainly isolating them geopolitically. So read the white paper which is linked below, read the actual law which the mainstream media has failed to do, both are in the PDF and understand that this is just one example of how the media can craft an entire narrative based around a premise that's simply not true. 
Check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash prisonplanet. I'm Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com.